remember hearing rumblings in the streets about country being the new genre that Beyonce would explore in act two of her three album project that gave birth to the cultural phenomenon that we now know as Renaissance in act one. And I was out here windmilling for the queen because a lot of my friends were really, really nervous about the idea of Beyonce even thinking about doing a country album. Especially after what she had gone through almost 10 years ago when she dropped Daddy Lessons and performed it on one of the biggest stages in country music. Just cowards. It's just crazy. She just gave you your greatest ratings that you've ever gotten. How dare you take her song off? And let's not even talk about what happened in 2019 with Lil Nas X dropping Old Town Road. It's Justin Diego back with another binge worthy video. And today, let's talk about the dark and shady history of country music and how Beyonce's decision to take up space in the country music genre in act two is just so intentional. Dear Diary. Ooh, I'ma show them. When I first heard about Black Americans inventing country music, I was so confused because if you think about the state of country music today, it's just so hard to take in. But I recently took a deep dive and every road always led me right back to the banjo. Hit it. The banjo's influence on country music descended from is West African instruments, and, and initially making its way to the Americas, being brought over by enslaved Africans in its original form, known as the West African lute. These sometimes 21 string instruments evolved into the banjos that we know today. Black people coped with our oppression and enslavement. They use music in the form of work calls, chants, and spirituals to tell stories and spread new information, which helped the banjo play a key part in African-American music and culture in the Southern United States. By the 1800s, music created by Black people became extremely popular within mainstream white music and minstrel shows helped bring these songs into the spotlight. White folks in blackface recreating plantation life to ridicule us, and us in blackface ridiculing them, ridiculing us. As a result, the banjo became heavily associated with these shows, even though it actually originated from African traditions. By the mid-1840s, no minstrel show was complete without a banjo. Fortunately, we eventually moved away from minstrelsy as the most popular form of entertainment here in America, but it's still important to realize the unintentional effects that it had on American culture. Albeit problematic and just flat out gross, minstrel shows had exposed so many white audiences to the banjo's unique sound and playing styles, and they weren't trying to let that go. I mean, I can't just sit here and pretend like it's not obvious that for as long as I can remember, country music has always had a certain type of reputation. Guilty. Yeah. Let's be real, when you hear those guitars start playing along with some of the insane lyrics that they be singing, rocking their red, white, and blue that don't always have 50 stars, you know to go ahead and exit stage left because this ain't for you. Yeah, to me, it's always felt like country music is definitely a white space, even though you can't tell me that you don't have your very own favorite country mob. I dug my key into the side of this pretty little soup top four wheel drive, turn my name into his leather seats. Maybe next time he'll think before he cheats. <laughs> No, I don't care if you're black, blue, green, white, red. Like, that song is still a bop. But even still, we know what's up. Yeah, 
it's undeniable. So where did this reputation come from? Jim. Now, I'm not even gonna lie, this next part really pissed me off because y'all, why did they basically banish black people to R&B and then they gave white folks country music like we were never gonna find out? Race records and hillbilly records were terms used in the early American recording industry from the 1920s to the 1940s to categorize music based on race and ethnicity. Now, it's important to recognize that these terms are extremely outdated and reflect racial segregation that was appropriate at the time. Yes, I was today years old when I found out about this and I was so pissed. My biggest issue with all of this is the fact that country music comes off as if it's so patriotic and as if it makes them more American. And I think that's probably why Beyonce is leaning so heavy on that red, white, and blue imagery. All right, it's this ain't Texas. This ain't Texas. All right, stop. That ass. This ain't Texas. I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that we're still participating in this categorization of music like this till this day when we know that it all started from such a negative place. And now it finally makes sense why Beyonce is doing all of this and trying to break out of that mold. I remember having a very heated conversation a few months ago with my friends when we were talking about how Renaissance was snubbed from getting Album of the Year and Record of the Year at the Grammys. And I was really trying to find the words to defend the fact that Beyonce winning two Grammys in the R&B category just wasn't right and that just never sat right with me. I did not have the right words to articulate myself back then, but something about this just didn't sit right with me. And now that we know that we've basically been banished over to R&B, I can't help but wonder, do we even like R&B or is that all we're allowed to like? Hi, Steve. Hi. I'm black and Filipino and my husband is white and he loves his country. He loves his Garth Brooks. Oh. He loves George Strait and Aruba McIntyre. He's always trying to get me to listen to country music, but I can't, I can't get into it. I can't twerk. I can't drop it down low and bring it back up. I don't know, cause I love <laughs> country music too. Beyonce dropped the official title of Act 2 along with this really striking visual for the Cowboy Carter album cover. It was officially real for me and honestly y'all, I was so shaken up by this color scheme and this American flag that has honestly been a huge trigger for so many Black Americans. <laughs> Hopefully this is the time that right people learn finally after all these years that when you continuously try to push black people out of spaces that you think they don't belong in, no, they're going to push back. Especially if the space was theirs in the first place. Who gave you that piece of information? <laughs> think this is about reclaiming black American patriotism because what even is that? Well, let, hold on, hold on, hold on on that. Hold on, hold on. Now, hold on. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> See ya. Exactly. I think this is simply about being petty. Flat out, <laughs> get your lick back. Because when you think about it, I really think she's just trying to make those people who made her feel uncomfortable on that stage feel the same way she felt, uncomfortable. After becoming the very first Black woman with the number one single on the Hot Country chart, Beyonce expressed her gratitude and released a statement saying, my hope is that years from now, the mention of an artist's race as it relates to releasing genres of music will be irrelevant. The context isn't celebrating America. It's about getting her lick back. <laughs> it's about getting her lick back, period. And y'all, I am screaming because why are we like this? 
The fact that that performance was eight years ago, and then she spent the last five years setting up her lick back, a petty, petty Virgo. <laughs> and she was something. This album has been over five years in the making. It was born out of an experience that I had years ago where I did not feel welcome, dot, dot, dot. And it was very clear that I wasn't. But because of that experience, I did a deeper dive into the history of country music and I studied our rich musical archive. And I just love that we're at the point where Beyonce just speaks directly to us. And if you know, you know. They cannot dictate to her what she can and cannot represent. And I think that's all this is saying. Make me, make me come up off this red, white, and blue. Make me come up off this genre. You can't, you can't do it. She really sat there and plotted for five years. <laughs> oh my God, y'all. The criticisms I faced when I first entered this genre forced me to propel past the limitations that were put on me. Act two is a result of me challenging myself and taking my time to bend and blend genres together to create this body of work. And if you go on Twitter, it's working, okay? They're pissed off, they're upset, and they're screaming cultural appropriation all up and down the timeline. Oh. You better be joking. And look, I definitely made this video with the intention of educating everyone. So I don't want to come off as though I'm being disrespectful or malicious in any way. But y'all, I was so shook when I found out that they never wanted us to be a part of country music since the very beginning. Like who the f are you? And like I said earlier in the video, it's definitely giving shut the f up and listen to your little urban music where we banish y'all to. So if you're gonna be mad at anyone, be mad at the institutions that are working overtime to this day to figure out a way to uphold this stupid system. And to really understand what the backlash was about, you have to get that it wasn't just about a black woman being on their stage. It was about a black woman that they did not approve of being on their stage. It is about them not having the power to gatekeep a Beyonce out of a space that they keep so many other black artists out of. Yes, this was a very important message from Beyonce. And I know everyone took such a deep sigh of relief when she confirmed that this is not her completely like switching up on us and never looking back talking about this ain't a country album this is a Beyonce album there's a team right now in the CMAs whose job it is to figure out how to rewrite criteria and requirements and considerations so that Beyonce does not get nominated in the CMAs next year you just know it you just know it the moment the moment that she came out there, there was a group there was a group chat there was a team's message there was slack happening what are we gonna do? And I personally cannot wait to see what they do. I was raised in the country where the view was real lovely and the ladies mighty fine, thick and sweet tea. Now my mama always loved me after school. She used to hug me and say, boy, I know you're thirsty, here's some sweet tea. We are officially in our country era and act two is out now. I am so grateful for Beyonce educating us on the dark and shady history of country music. And I am so glad that she featured some really, really great black country artists like Willie Jones, Shabuzi, and Tanner Adele. Hey y'all, if you don't know who I am, my name is Tanner Adele. I'm a pop country music artist. I'm gonna put my lashes on. Should I talk to you guys about why it's not okay that Beyonce is coming into the country genre and disrupting it. Thank you, that is all. <laughs> that was hilarious. hilarious. I learned so much making this video, like how Ray Charles actually made one of the greatest country records of all time and there is still so much for me to learn and I cannot wait to continue to educate myself as much as I possibly can while I wait for Beyonce to go ahead and release everything that she has in store. 
Thank you guys so much for watching this binge-worthy video with me. It has truly been such an honor and a pleasure. And if you guys are one of my loyal binge watchers, thank you so much for taking this journey with me. And I really, really love you guys for that. And if you found me because you search for this video, because you are going down the rabbit hole of trying to see why Beyonce went country, you might as well stick around because there is so much more that we can unpack together. Y'all, please, please, please like this video and leave a comment because it really, really helps a lot, especially with niche content like this. And if you really, really want to make my day, please use this video to start a conversation with your friends, your loved ones, your haters, anybody, <laughs> because I really feel like the story of how black people had such a huge influence on country music as we know it today really needs to be told. You're free to use any clips from the video on TikTok, Instagram. You can remix this video here on YouTube or whatever y'all want to do. And wherever you please, just be sure to tag me so that I can show you guys some love. All right. Thanks again for watching this video all the way to the end. I will see y'all cowboys and cowgirls on the next one because I have a feeling that I'll be back. We never gave up on the banjo. We were just busy creating all this other music that didn't require it, like rock and roll. Yeah, let's go. Nobody here that can stop me Cause I'm in a league of my own care Y'all can just sit back and watch me They know who I am, they can't imitate Don't stay in your lane, I'ma set it straight I'm putting my way to the top You get in my way, you know that I'ma renovate Oh my God, y'all. I was so nervous about Beyonce doing Jolene because I'm just like, that song is so iconic. I get it, but it's so problematic and broke down and I just don't want to hear my queen begging no to stay away from her man. So, I really like what she did with this new Beyonce version of Jolene. You won't see me when I'm coming through. You can't stop me, I'm running through. I'm untouchable. Oh my God, y'all, I love Miley Cyrus so. I am just so happy that she is featuring Miley on this album. Like, I did not have Miley and Beyonce on a song together in my 2024 bingo cards, but Miley is such a country music icon and Beyonce, I see what you did there. <laughs> and you better put her on your rock album too because I'm still with plastic hearts. Wishful thinking, yeah. You're a dreamer. It's finally like, out there and I just want people to appreciate it. I just want to be appreciated. <laughs> they been sleeping on me, think it's time to wake them up. They been sleeping on me, think it's time to wake them up. You been playing it safe, now it's time to shake it up. Playing it safe, now it's time to shake it up. So it's time to make a change. Yeah, it's time to break the chains. Yeah, it's time to bring the pain. Let them know till I'm weak. Yeah.